right so in today's session uh, we'll see how we can perform the mouse actions so not normally what are the actions we do uh, through mouse what are the different kinds of actions we can do let's say mouse over right click double click drag and drop right so these are all comes under mouse actions mouse related operations we can do so how we can achieve this through automation so how we can do mouse operation through our automation script. So we'll see that. And to perform mouse operations, uh, Selenium is provided a special uh, class called Actions. Actions is a, a predefined class, which is available in Selenium WebDriver. And in this Actions class, there, is, there are certain number of methods are there, like to perform mouse over and to perform right click and double click, drag and drop, so to perform all these operations, we have a different methods are available in the actions class. Okay. So now we need to create an actions class object. Through that object, we can access all those methods and accordingly we can do required operations. So this is a most important class, actions class, which is a predefined class, which is available in Selenium WebDriver. Now we'll see one by one. Uh, how what how we can perform the mouse operations and how to access the method from the actions class object. So first thing, uh, let us start with, let me put some operations. What are all things we can do? We can say mouse over action. And then we can do a right click action, double click action and drag and drop. So these are the main four types of actions normally we do using mouse. Mouse over, right click, double click, and drag. For each operation, there is a dedicated methods are available in the actions class. So what is an actions? Actions is a, a predefined class provided in Selenium. Provided in Selenium. And through which we can perform all the operations. So but what are the methods are there? We will discuss one by one. So first thing, mouse over action. So what is mouse over action? How we can perform it? So you can take any website, sample website I'm taking. So mouse over in the sense what? We can place the mouse, uh, mouse on that particular element. So for example, let's say here, uh, this is my application. Let's say I put my mouse cursor on that some element, let's say, I want to see desktops. So I can just put my cursor on the desktops. Now, as soon as I mouse over on that element, some more elements are displaying. So PC and Mac. Similarly, I can put mouse over on another elements. Like you see, I can put mouse over on components. Now it is displaying some more elements. So this is called mouse over action. So we can place the mouse cursor on the whichever element you want. But sometimes some options we can see only through mouse over action. Suppose I want to see the desktop options, how it is possible. Currently, it is not displaying on the page, but I want to see the desktop options. The only thing is we need to place our mouse on that particular element. Then only these options are visible. Same thing, whenever I place my cursor on the components, then only I can see these options, right? This is called mouse over action. So you can put mouse cursor on whichever element you want on this web page. So let's see how we can do this mouse over action. The first action is mouse over action. Very easy, very simple, and very interesting as also. Let's focus on this. Let's go to new package, day 35. Create new class, mouse over action okay now i created a new class main method inside this here this is our web driver instance import and new chrome driver and this is application i'm launching and then maximizing the web page so now my requirement is i want to mouse over on the desktop and then again, I want to mouse over on the Mac. And then I will perform the click action on the Mac. So ultimately, I want to click on the Mac here. So I can go to the Mac page. So before doing that, what you can do, we need to do mouse over action on the desktops. And after that, again, one more time, mouse over action on the Mac. And then here, I will perform the click action. Three steps. 
first i will go to desktop option that is mouse over action then i will go to mac that is another mouse over action then i want to perform the click action on the mac okay now how many elements we need to identify here how many elements we required desktop is one element mac is another element so two elements we want to capture it first okay then we can perform the mouse over action so let us capture these two elements uh, using xpath so let me inspect this desktop element and go back to selector hub and this is the xpath which is given let me copy this xpath so driver dot find element by dot xpath so this is the one element i'm just capturing the element i'm not performing any action this is called desktops and the type of this variable is web element so now one element we captured next thing one more element is there so desktops and also mac one this is also element we want to capture inspect this mac one and you can see this is the element it is saying mac one and you can see alert is showing this element is not interactable through selenium as it is not visible in ui so this is the problem with this element actually selector hub is clearly saying the element is not suppose if you want to directly click on mac one it is not possible first we need to that element should be visible how it is visible first we need to go to desktops mouse over action then it is visible so once it is visible then we can perform any type of action so i'm getting this element and then this element also i need so i can say driver dot find element by dot x path and specify that x path it is just like a link actually menu options these are all menu options if i inspect this desktops uh, what is a tag it is showing is just an anchor tag okay this is an element links they are basically called links and present inside the menu items as part of menu item they are not buttons actually okay if it is a button there is an input tag if it is a link there is an anchor tag a okay fine so now yeah this is another element which is mac that i am going to capture mac and this is also web element right so now we capture two elements because we want to perform mouse over action on these two elements fine so elements are ready now we need to perform the mouse over action so mouse over action is a uh, mouse related action so all mouse actions we can handle only through actions class object so how we can do the mouse over action first thing we have to create an object for actions class that is a predefined class which is available in selenium so i'm creating actions act equal to new actions so this actions class we have to import from org dot open dot org dot selenium dot interactions so this is a package which we have to import so the actions class is a part of interactions package now whenever you create an object for actions class we have to pass the driver parameter into actions constructor so this is the mandatory because actions class contains a constructor which is expecting driver as a parameter so that we have to pass this is one prerequisite so how to create an actions class object actions act is a object a variable you can put any type of variable equal to new actions and then driver so we have to pass the driver we should not forget this and now by using this action class object we can access all the methods which are available in actions for example let's say act dot see these are all the different methods double click context click click and hold click okay so drag and drop drag and drop by there are n number of methods are there in the actions class and not only mouse actions we can also do keyboard actions also by using actions class object we can also perform the keyboard actions like sometimes we do shortcut keys we press shortcut keys control z control v escape enter so these actions also we can do through the actions class object so the various methods are present in this 
context so we'll see we'll see one by one. Today we'll focus only on the the mouse actions. The next class I will show you how we can perform the keyboard actions. Okay. Now by using this act object, we can access all the methods which are available in the actions class. Now what is an action we want to perform now is mouse over action. So to perform the mouse over action, we have one method called act dot move to element move to element this is a method so what this method will require is we need to pass on which element we want to mouse over so what is the first element we want to mouse over is desktops now get this element and put here okay so now what is this command uh, this method will do this will move to element on this element but not only this element i again i want to mouse over on the mac after this mouse over again i want to do another mouse over on this mac so we will continue this dot so one more method move to element and here we can specify the mac now two times i call this method why because first time i want to mouse over on the desktop from there again i want to mouse over on the mac two times we need to do mouse over so first we need to mouse over on the desktop then mac is visible then again, I can mouse over on the Mac. Two times I have done. Suppose if you have only one element to mouse over, then you can stop here. Move to element and then element. Okay. And one more thing. So whenever you are trying to access any method from the actions class, that method should end with the build dot perform. So for example, here mouse over action is completed. So this we first mouse over on the desktop. Then we mouse over on the Mac. We can end the statement, but you cannot see the action performed on the UI. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to call one more method called dot build dot perform. So these two methods we should call mandatorily for every action method. Okay. So even if you have a three elements, you can continue to dot move to element, dot move to element. You can write n number of methods. The chaining of methods, you can put multiple methods if you have multiple sequences. Okay, but first we need to go to this one. Then we need to go to this one. And on the Mac, we should stop. So we need to call build.perform. In the next example, I will explain more about what is build.perform, what exactly it will do, okay? So build is a method which will create an action. Perform is a method which will complete an action. So remember this much for now. Later, I will elaborate these two methods. Build method will just create an action, but it will not complete an action. Okay. And if you don't specify these two, then what happens is this cannot perform any action. Even if you do mouse over, you can end the statement here. But this is not a complete statement. This is not complete statement. So as soon as you say move to element, immediately we have to build that action first and then we have to perform this action. We have to complete that action. Okay. And this build.perform, these methods are belongs to whichever, suppose the move to element is there. So this method is also returning actions class object. So build.perform is also part of the actions class. They are also part of the actions class. Okay. So this is the complete statement. Remember, whenever you use any method from the actions class, that should end with build.perform. So these two methods we should call mandatorily required. So these two methods are mandatory. So we need to say semicolon. So this will create an action. Build is a method which will create an action. Perform is a method which will complete an action. Okay. So just remember this much for now. Later, I will give you more examples on build.perform. What exact it is, we will try to understand the differences and all. So this particular statement will perform the mouse over action. Mouse over action. So now let us see how we can perform this. Run as Java application. See now, it went to desktop and then it is mouse over on the Mac. So now Mac is one is highlighting there. But suppose if you want to perform click action on this Mac, 
okay i want to perform the click action after mouse over i want to perform click action so then you can continue the statement so here mute element of mac and before using this build dot perform just call click method and even after clicking you have to use build dot perform okay suppose if you want to additionally perform click action on this mac you can say dot click and then build out and here the click is also belongs to the actions class and this click method is also belongs to the actions class. so whichever method we are calling from the actions class should end with build dot perform if you don't have a build dot perform the action will not be created the action will not be completed so now if i execute this this will first mouse over on the desktop then it will mouse over on the mac and then it will perform the click See, application is open. Now we can see it is successfully went to desktop and click on the Mac. So now it will go to the MacBook. There is a MacBook page is available. So now we got this Mac. So this is how we can simply perform the mouse over action. Even if you have a single element, we should end with the build.perform. But if you want to perform any action, mostly click action, if you want to perform that element, and you can use moot element of element dot click dot build dot perform. This is a complete statement. Okay. Now, some people will write the same statement without having build. So some people will do like this. Here, they don't use build method. They directly call perform. So most of the times you can see this also. Now, this will also do the same thing. Whatever it, the first statement is doing, this is also doing the same thing. But what is the difference? If I call build.perform, the action is performing fine, well. But instead of calling this build, can I call directly perform method? If you call perform method, then what will happen? So this we need to understand something here. So whenever I, I told you two important points. One is when I call build first, it will create an action. These are the thumb rules you need to remember. Build is a method which will just create an action. It will not complete it. Perform is a method which will actually perform the operation. Perform is a method which will actually complete an action. Building and complete an action. Okay, remember this. Now, in the first statement, what will happen is, first of it will create an action, then it will perform it. That means first it will create an action or it build that action. Then it will complete an action by using perform. But in the second statement, it will directly calling perform method. That means it is trying to perform the action directly. But who will build that action? Here first we build that action, then we perform it. But here we are directly performing it. But who will build that action? So the difference is, when you call perform method, perform method itself is able to build that action. It is capable of building an action. Even though if you are not using build method explicitly, still our perform method can do two actions. So it can do create an action and also it can complete an action. Both the things the perform method can do it. That is the reason instead of using build method explicitly we can directly use perform also okay the perform method is capable to do building an action and also complete an action both it can do so that's the reason we can directly call perform method so let me show you how we can do so let me remove this click method for now if you want you can use it no problem so now let me just run it i'm just calling only perform method just observe same mouse over action is done. So it went to desktops and Mac. So if you look at this, which one we have to use and which one is preferred. When I say build.perform, first it is building the action, then performing it. Perform is completing an action. But when you call perform method, basically what is the purpose of perform is completing the action. But who will build that action? Here we are not explicitly calling build method. So the perform method itself will build that action and perform the action. That means the perform method internally calling build method. 
internally calling build and then it is completing an action that means using this build method or calling this build method is optional that is not mandatory but in the older versions of selenium earlier versions selenium 2 3 we have this option build it or perform so later on we stop using this build method but sometimes which is also required i'll tell you some scenarios when we have to build an action and when we have to perform an action here we are doing simultaneously we first we are building that action immediately we have to perform the action but here we are directly performing the action okay but why we need to build that action when we have to create an action when you have to perform sometimes sometimes there is a scenario like first i want to create an action but later on after some time or after executing some statements i will perform the action immediately i don't want to perform i just want to create an action initially but after executing some more statements then i want to perform the action in those particular scenarios the build method will be useful very very useful and that also i will show you one more example later for now just hold on stick to this we are discussing about mouse over action just focus only on that but when to use build action this is not mandatory okay this is optional because when you call perform method it will directly perform the action it will build an action immediately to perform the action no doubt about this but sometimes initially we will create an action later i want to execute that action or later i want to perform the action in those cases we use this build method okay another example i will show you for that so for now just remember this so here we may create an action and the implementation will be later yes that's what i'm saying initially you can create an action whenever you want to perform it you can perform it or whenever you want to complete that action you can complete it that possibility is there i will show you that scenario hold on for some time okay so this is mouse over action we can directly call perform or we can call build dot perform both are doing the same thing so when you call perform method what happens the perform method also internally building that action and performing an action when i say build dot perform here we are building the action when you call perform method perform is also doing one more time build right two times action will be action is building here when you say build dot perform two times action is building first time when you call build method it is building that action second time when you call perform method the perform is also internally doing building an action so two times it is building an action so that's the reason instead of doing two times you can simply call one time perform method and one time it is built and it will perform the action so this is a way we can do mouse over action so the method is what mouse over action what is the method move to element of on which element we have to mouse over we need to specify that so move to element this is a method which we can access through action slash object fine now go to the next one a right click action so before going to that everyone is clear how we can perform the mouse over action it's very simple we need to first create an action class object then from that object we can access move to element on whichever element you want to mouse over you can specify dot if you have a multiple elements you can just continue the statement move to element of element dot move to element dot move to element you can provide multiple move to elements if you have a multiple sequence of elements but all those elements should be interlinked okay so for example let's say first i want to move to element desktop and continuation move to element laptops is not possible because this is another element there is no link between these two but there is a link between desktops and mac desktops and pc in that case you can use move to element dot move to element dot move to element dot like that so storing an action and everything is the next concept i will discuss that hold on for some time if you know something just keep wait for some time i will discuss that point how to store an action how to build an action all those things so this is mouse over action now let us move on to the next one uh, next one is right click action we'll see how to perform the right click action through the mouse so for that i'm taking one more application how to perform the right click action so i'll take one more application
just a second. Yeah. So here you can see there is a button called right click me. If you are doing normal click, nothing is happened. There is no functionality associated with this. If you do normal click, nothing is happened. When you do right click, you can see some options. This is also called context menu. Context menu and the right click is also called as a context click. Okay, in the technical terminology, the right click action is also called as a context click. And whatever menu here you can see after right clicking, this is called context menu, right? So these options we will get only when you do right click action. If you do normal click, you won't get it. When you do right click, then you will get these options. Okay, now we'll see how we can perform this right click to get these options. So let's go to another example. New class. Right click. Action. All right, so now I'm taking a web driver a variable. Control shift to O. And this is the driver and then maximizing the page. This is the page. And after that, I'm just maximizing the page. Fine. So now we need to perform right click action on this element. So on whichever element we want to perform right click, first we need to capture that element. Okay. But when you try to inspect this, if you right click and you will not get inspect because this button is associated with some right click functionality. So normally when you do right click on any other page or any other element, you will get this inspect option. But when you do right click on this, you won't get, but how we can get the DOM of the DOM structure of this element. Very simple. You can just right click somewhere else on the page, anywhere on the page inspect, you will get the DOM. After that, you can take this arrow mark and then show this element. You can see there is a span tag is there. And right click me is a text. So if I go back and go to selector hub, and I can say this is the X path which is given. So let's capture this X path for that button. Go back and driver dot find element. If you do normal click, nothing will happen. So we can say driver dot find element by dot X path. So normally when you put X path like this, if you say normal click. So dot click. So nothing is happened because there is no click action on that element. Only right click we have to perform. So we just get this element in a variable. So this is a button. And the type of this variable is what? Web element. This is a web element. Now, so we need to perform the right click action. So before right clicking action on this element, we need to first create an actions class object let's create an actions class object act equal to new actions and whenever you create an actions class object don't forget to pass driver object inside the constructor now this actions class we have to import from interactions dot actions now we need to perform the right click action right click action all right, so to perform the right click action, it's very simple. Direct method is available. Take the actions class object, act dot, context click, context click. This is a method, context click on which element you want to perform right click that you can specify. So we already captured the button element and that we need to pass and this will perform the right click. But we need to build an action, we need to perform the action. So you can call builder.perform or you can directly call perform. So that is mandatory. So this will perform the right click action, context click. Let's execute and see. Context click is a method. Okay, now we can see it is successfully clicked. One more time I'm executing. Yes, so we got all these options. Suppose uh, let's enhance further. Suppose in these options, 
I want to click on one of these options. Let's say I want to click on this copy. So when I click on the copy, then what normal click? When you normal click on the copy, you will get one alert window. Alert. So immediately I want to close this alert window. Just there is only one OK button. So we can use accept. Close this window. Okay, how we can enhance this code. So after clicking on this, after right clicking, we got a context menu. In that we will click on the copy. So click on copy. How to click on this? Let's inspect this element. So right click inspect. You can click on anywhere inspect. And then I need to open in another browser. Yeah. So after right clicking, you are getting these options. Now I want to click on this copy. So let's inspect this only this copy element. Right now we can see one more relative X path is given. Capture the relative X path of this copy and now go here. Say driver dot find element by dot X path. And we can do normal click on this. So you can directly call dot click. This is a normal click action. And after clicking on this, you will get an alert window. So that I want to close. Close alert box. How to close it? First, we need to switch to the alert box and then we can accept it. So driver dot switch to dot alert dot accept. So switch to dot alert. We switch to the alert, then accept it. Because that's the only action I want to perform. So I can switch. Suppose if you want to perform any other action, suppose if you want to capture uh, some text from this alert box and everything, then what you can do, you can store this alert window in another variable, alert type of variable, then use get text that will get the text value. And after that, you can do accept. But here I just want to accept it. So I'm just call driver.switch.alert.accept. So this will close your alert box. Simple. So right click, then I click on copy, and then I got an alert box, then I have closed it. And it will go very faster. So I'll put some wait statement here. Thread to dot sleep. I'll just pause our code for some time so that we can see the alert box or else it will go very faster. Done. So now execute. You can see it is successfully right click copy. Now we got an alert and it is also closed. So this is how we can simply do right click action. So what is the method act class dot context click of element dot perform context click up. What is the method for this? Very, very important. There are just four to five methods are there. You have to remember them. During interview, it is very, very important. They will ask you, just can you tell me some uh, uh, action class methods? Then you should able to tell, okay? Context click of element. So this is a method. Context click is nothing but a right click. Fine. So is this clear to everyone how to perform the right click? It's very, very easy, straightforward. Driver uh, context click is a method and whichever element you want to perform right click, specify dot perform, right? Now, let's move to the next one, double click action. This is also sometimes we required in our test cases, double click. So when you do normal click on the button, nothing will happen. Sometimes we do double click, then only action will be performed. So let me show you an example for double click action. Okay, so let's go to another page. Yeah, so look at this page. This is a page I have. And uh, there are two frames are there in this page. So you can see field one and field two. Can you see this by field one and field two? Oh, let me maximize it. Okay, here it is a field one and a field two. So just observe the functionality. In the field one, there is some text which is already populating, which is hello world. Now field two is empty, nothing is there. 
So I'm just clicking on copy text. This is a button. When I click on it, nothing has happened. When you do double click, then same text is got copied into the second box. Same text is copied into second box. How it has happened? Because of double click action. So when you do double click, then the text is got copied into the second box. Now we need to verify this functionality. So whether the same text is copied into the field two or not, we need to check after double clicking in action. Okay. So let's, and not only this, we can remove this and we can pass whatever text you want. And when it's a double click, the same text is got copied into the second box. So now I want to verify this functionality. The same text is copied in the second box after double clicking or not. We need to check it. So let's do this. Take another example, new class, double click, action. Okay, so now we created WebDriver object and this is the application I launched and then maximize the browser window. Now. So let us do step by step. So first thing, by default, when you open the page, field one is having some value by default and then field two is empty. And when you do right click, the same text is copied into the second box. Now, how many elements we need to interact here? Three elements. One is the first input box. Okay, and if you want to pass some text in this, then we can inspect field one. Or if you want to copy the same text in the second box, you don't need to identify the field one. But what I want to do is I want to remove this existing text and I want to pass a new text. So field one also I want to recognize and then field two also we need because we, after double click, the text is same or not, we need to check. So field two element also we need to identify and copy text button also we need to identify. Totally three elements we want to identify. Or let's write the locators for those three elements. I can say driver dot find element and by dot x path. Okay, now I'm just going to show you one important feature from the selector hub. See here, there are three elements, right? So if you want to get an x path from the selector hub, what you will do normally, you inspect this and go to selector hub like this and you will capture the x path and use it in automation. After that, next time you go to next element and again copy the text path and use it in your application. After that, again, you can go to this element, then again copy the text path. So this process you repeat multiple times for multiple elements, right? Suppose I have more elements on your web page. Let's say you have five elements or 10 elements. I want to get X paths of all those elements. Whatever elements are displayed here, I want to capture all the X path at one shot. I don't want to repeat the same process again and again. So that we can do using selector. A very, very useful feature, which is available. I will show you that feature now. So to get all the elements locators at one shot, what you can do is there is an option here. So there is an option here, the second, third option. Click to generate locators page and multiple selectors. The first, second, third option. In the selector hub, you can see the third option. What is the third option? Click to generate locators, locators page and multiple selectors. So once you click on it, you will get an empty page here. Okay. And in this empty page, what you need to do is just get this uh, arrow mark and whichever element you want to locate, just show them one by one. So I'm just clicking in this arrow mark. Observe very carefully. I'm highlighting the first one and clicking on the first element. See, it is automatically captured. Immediately click on the second element. Second element. And one more time, take this inspect. Second element captured. One more time, taking the inspect and third element captured. Now you can see three X paths are captured for these three elements. Not only X path, it is also captured a CSS. And if ID is available, ID is also captured. If the name is available, names also captured. Currently names, class, link text are not there. So they have not captured. If they are available, they also capture. So this is another useful feature which we have. 
Now, if you want to copy these three XPath at once, you can use this option. Click to copy all the XPath. Just copy it. Now go back to your script and paste it over here. So these are the XPath we directly capture for these three elements. So this is a very, very useful feature which is available in the selector hub. So third option, click to stop. And after capturing all the element, you can stop it. I'm again, one more time I'm clicking on this. It is get stopped. So third option, you can just explore it. Just click on it. And uh, after, uh, after starting this uh, option, you can inspect any of these elements, multiple elements on the web page one by one. It is automatically create all the XPath and now you can export it. Okay, that option is there. So now I'm going to use these three XPaths to capture those three elements. Now I can say driver dot find element by dot XPath. See how it is reducing a lot of effort for us. So will very, very useful. So you can say by dot XPath dot. So I'm not performing any action because we want to get the data and everything. So I just want to get this element in a variable. So I just call it as a box one. First input box, so it's a box one. This is a web element. Okay, and this web element I can import. And same thing, I can do another one web element box two, second input box. And this is the X path for the second input box. Okay, this is also done. Now the third element is the button. You can say driver dot find element by dot X path. And Put this X path in the double quotes. This is a button element. So this is also web element. I can say web element button. So now three elements have captured. So box one, box two, box. So this is a very simple case. So let me explain one more time. You're not seeing properly. See, if you want to capture multiple web elements, you can go to the third option. There is a third click to generate locators page and multiple selectors. It will be on. If you want to clear the existing one, you can just click on the delete button. So it is everything is clear. Now you can inspect the elements one by one. So I'm inspecting field one captured. Now one more time, go to inspect the second field captured. Now the third field captured. Everything will be captured like this one after another. After that, you can just do copy option. Click to copy all the XPath. This is the option. Just do one or two rounds, we'll be familiar with this. Very simple. All right. Now I captured the three elements box one, box two, button. Now we want to perform the double click action. Okay. So before doing double click action, I want to do something on this application. Let me open it. Okay. So first thing, I don't want to pass the same text, I want to pass a new text. So before passing the new text, we have to clear this. The existing value we have to remove. And then I can pass a new text. After that, I can double click here. And whatever is there in the first box, same thing will be copied into the second box. So first of all, I want to clear the field one. So take this box one, this element. And how to clear the text from the input box? Yes, dot clear. So this will clears the box one, clears the box one. After clearing on the same box, I want to pass some text by using send keys. I'm passing some text called welcome. Okay, input box is done. After that, in the second input box, do we want to pass anything? Nothing. We don't pass anything in the second box. So after passing the text in the field one, we have to just double click on this copy text. So we need to perform the double click action on the copy text. So let's perform the double click action here. So to perform the double click, what we need to do? Double click action. So double click action on the button. So first we need to create an action class object. Actions act equal to new actions, pass the driver instance, 
and import these actions. Right. So after that, we need to call one method, direct method called double click. Act dot double click. This is the method. Act dot double click. On which element you want to perform double click? This is the element that I want to pass dot perform. Build dot perform or perform anything. So this will perform the double click action. Act dot double click of element. On which element you want to perform double click that we need to pass dot perform. So this will perform the double click action. So let us cross check. And we do validation also. Java application. So observe and it is launching my application. It is little bit slow. We need to wait for some time. Okay, now it is launched, maximized. Now it should clear the first field and then perform the double click action. So it is not doing, what is the problem? Yeah, we got an error. See the error first. What it is saying? No such element exception, unable to locate an element. When you will get this exception? The, in, uh, the XPath is perfectly fine. The XPath is correct and everything is fine, but it is unable to locate an element. No such element exception. It is unable to locate an element because that element is inside the frame. That element is inside the frame. So that's the reason we are not able to locate this element. When inspecting this element, go to selector hub. See what it is saying when I inspecting this element, our selector hub is giving one alert. This element is inside the same origin iframe. Switch inside the iframe to access it through automation. Also, it is giving the XPath of the iframe. Frame XPath also it is giving. So first we need to switch to the frame. After switching to the frame, then we can interact with the element. Okay, after that we can interact with the frame. And one more thing, if you look at the iframe here, there is ID attribute and name attribute is also there. ID attribute is what iframe result. And here also name is also iframe result. So if ID name is directly available, you can switch to the frame directly. So what I will do is before interacting, before getting these elements, I want to switch to the frame. So because all these elements are present inside the frame. So switch to frame. How to switch it? Driver dot switch to dot frame. And if ID or name is present, you can directly specify them in the double quotes. So currently this iframe ID is there, iframe result or name, whatever, both are same. That you can directly specify. Okay, or else you can pass the entire frame as a web element here or you can try to specify name or ID directly. So this command will switch to the frame and then it will get the elements and then it will perform the action. Let's execute now one more time. So just observe. So hello world will be clear and then it will enter the welcome. Then same thing is copied into the, will be copied into the field two. Yes, now you can see the same text is got copied into the second field because it is successfully done double click action. Okay, now I want to verify the same text is got copied in the second box or not. I want to verify the same text is got copied into second box or not. I want to verify that. Okay, now how we can verify. How to put the validation point. So whatever text we passed, the same text should be displayed in the second field. So we already passed the value here. 
the same text should be there in the second box. How we can validate? What is the validation? Box two should contains welcome. This is the same text we passed. So that should have. So if you want to verify box to two contains the same text or not, how we can do, how we can capture the text, how we can capture the text here. So we already captured the element, right? So can we use get text from the box two? So box two, the value is already present. It is already copied. Now we need to capture the text, right? Now we can say, can we say box two dot get text? Yes or no? Box two dot get text. So that will give the text string value, right? Or else what you can do, you can put directly in if condition. If uh, box two dot get text, okay, dot equals, dot equals, you can directly specify the value which we have given. This is a if condition. And then you can put here system dot 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 print ln here successfully copied text copied else if both are not equal then you can say text not copied properly okay this is a validation suppose if you want to store this get text value in some other variable you can put this another variable no problem you can make it another statement box two dot get text and here text and this is a, a string variable okay this is a string variable and now we can compare the text with our equals method so instead of this i can just remove the text right this is the way we can write fine so now box two dot get text method will capture the text value and store it into the variable. Now we are comparing that value equals to welcome or not, right? This is a validation. So if you want to compare with the box one value, you can still compare, no problem. But you need to capture the text from box one also. Okay, box one dot get text, another statement box two dot get text, store both of them in two different variables and you can compare. That is also other way we can do it. Okay, because we ourselves, we passed the value so I'm just comparing with that. Okay. Otherwise, you can capture after passing this value. You can capture the value from the box one. You can capture the value from the box two. Then you can compare it. Any, anything is correct. Okay. All right. Now, execute and see what will happen. So remember, to capture the value from the input box, we use get text method. And uh, earlier also, we used get text method to capture the text from the web element. Right. Now, Observe this scenario. When I run as a Java application, maximizing the page. So this page takes uh, too long time. We need to wait for a few seconds. Okay, now whatever text we passed in the field one, same thing is got copied. Both are exactly the same. Now if I go back and see the output, text not copied properly. Text not copied properly. Why it is given? Some validation is got failed. Why it is failed? So whatever text we captured, that is not actually matching with welcome. Why it is matching? Why it is not matching? Because we are giving anyway uppercase characters. Here also we have given uppercase characters. Exactly the same, right? Equals method should match it. But somehow it is not matching. So how we can verify? First of all, let us see this get text method is able to capture the text correctly or not. Okay. So for that, what I will do is I will try to print text value here. Okay. We'll see captured value is I'm printing the text. This is how we can cross check. Even, e even if you give equal ignore case, it will not work because 
exactly it is giving same value we are giving welcome and welcome but still not matching so that's not a problem comparison is not a problem the problem is what whatever value we are getting into the text that is not matching with this one but this value we are given correctly but we need to doubt we are doubting about this value text value so for that reason before comparing i am just printing the value okay before comparing i am just printing the value so if you print the value we will know that right what is the value it is written in so let us execute and see one more time whether the get text method is correctly giving the value from the second box or not that we want to check first so comparison there is no problem with the comparison we are comparing both words in the uppercase characters using equals method and also text is also successfully copying so whatever we pass in the field one same thing is also copied into the second box this is also perfectly fine and comparison also perfectly fine but the problem is here is captured value is not getting anything captured value is empty captured value is empty that means get text method is not able to capture the value from the box 2 get text method is not able to capture the value from the box 2 that is a problem here so now we need to understand something very very important even in interview also which is very very important get text method cannot get the value in some times what is the scenario so i will tell you and also we'll see how to capture the text from it without using get text method if i look at this page just look at this page and see the html of this i'm inspecting this element field 2 and this is the input box do we have any text displayed in the field 2 here just like a field 1 in the field 1 there is a value attribute and there is hello world but in the field 2 are we getting anything here nothing so get text method is always capture inner text of the element remember this point very very important get text method will capture only inner text of the element what is inner text do we have inner text for this input box 1 or input box 2 do we have inner text do we have inner text no what is an inner text this is the inner text you can say copy text is there this is called inner text which is included in the greater than and less than that's called inner text so do we have inner text for the field 2 and field 2 field 1 and 2 no we do not have inner text so whatever text is displayed here they are not inner text if they are inner text then only we can capture the text by using get text method so let me give some examples here so that you can easily understand so here okay get text is not working then how we can actual how to get the actual value get text is not working because they are not inner text but they are the values of value attribute if i look at this hello world what is this actually the value of value attribute right this is what what is this this is a value of value attribute and after double clicking what is happening the same value is copied into the second box now in the field 2 whatever the value which is copied from field 1 to field 2 now field 2 value is what same again so field 1 field 2 is having value attribute okay when you do double click what happens whatever the value is there in the field 1 the same thing is copied into field 2 now what is a value of the value attribute of field 2 same value right so if you look at the implementation code this is a html code they have implemented javascript code they have implemented to design this just observe this is a html of the field 1 and there are some attributes type id and value and whatever the by default whatever the text is displayed here that is assigned to the value attribute there is no inner text now after double clicking what happens so this is the button on double clicking what happens they are doing something here so this method will be called what is this method is doing here field 2 the value will be set field 2 value attribute will be set with what 
from the field one get element by id you can see from the field one this is the javascript but it is very easy to understand from the field one capturing the value assign the field to value basically what it is doing when you do double click action it is capturing the value from the field one and assign the same value to the field two value attribute it will do runtime at runtime when you do double click action this method will be called this function javascript function will be called and action will be performed so what we need to understand here there is no inner text for these two elements only we have a value attribute so this text is belongs to what value attribute okay remember now by using get text we cannot get that value because there is no inner text but what is the other way we can capture the value attribute we need to capture the value of value attribute that is our ultimate goal now instead of get text instead of get text what we need to do we have to call one more method called get attribute of which attribute value we want to capture which attribute value we want to capture value attribute that we have to specify in the double quotes value so what is this method will do is get attribute method will get the value of the attribute which we specified here so currently we specified the value attribute so this will return the value of value attribute so this will exactly give the value so let's execute and see i will give you more examples just to hold on so get attribute of value that's a method we are we have used alternatively instead of using get text method now observe this whether we are able to get the value or not and which is very important what is the difference between get text and get attribute value when to use get text when to use get attribute value i will show you more examples let's finish this one it is not display in the dom why because the copying will happen only at the run time not at the design time so dom will give you whatever things will happen only in the design time not in the run time so that is the reason when you inspect this field to element after copying you cannot see the value attribute because this will happen only at run time so the javascript function will be called only when you click on the copy button so that's the reason it will not show you in the dom structure in html okay now you can just go back and see yes you got a captured value is welcome now comparison is passed now the text is got copied this is the way we have to capture the attribute now let us try to understand this with more examples so that you will be more clear because this is very very important lot of people are having more confusion on this when to use get text when to use get attribute of value okay so i'll give you some examples you should tell me that okay what is the difference between get text versus get attribute of value so whichever attribute value you want to get that attribute you can specify so in this bracket you need to specify attribute okay now let me show you some example you guys can tell me suppose i have html like this input id equal to x y z id equal to x y z input x, uh, id equal to x y z and in this i have something called some value which is inner text slash input now if you look at this html do we have inner text in this inner text yes welcome is the inner text so id is also available id is what id is what x y z id is what attribute okay inner text is welcome now my requirement is i want to capture this inner text of this web element how to capture this inner text dot get text dot get text so element dot get text what this will do get text method will return the inner text will returns the inner text so what is the inner text here welcome is the inner text now suppose you have it get attribute of id 
because here we don't have a value attribute and I have ID attribute, I'm say ID. So get attribute of ID. What this will return? It will return the value of ID attribute. So this will return the value of attribute. It can be any attribute. So the output is what? X, Y, Z. So now you understood with this example. Now let me give you another one. Let us say I have same input value equal to some X, Y, Z value equal to let's say welcome. And there is no inner text for this. Now I want to capture the value. What is the method we can use? I want to capture this. Get attribute, right? Because we don't have inner text here. This is got closed. We don't have a inner text. So only get attribute method we can use. Get attribute of value that we need to put in the double quotes. So this will return welcome. Okay. So now you understood the difference. If anybody asks you during the interview, you should be able to tell. Get text method always returns the inner text of the web element. It can be any type of web element. Inner text, if it is available, it will return. If inner text is not available, it will return nothing. Get attribute is a method which will return the value of the attribute of the element. It can be any attribute, ID attribute, name attribute, class, or whatever it is. But their attribute should be available in the HTML. So get attribute is a method which will return the values of an attribute. So get text method will returns the inner text of the element, whereas get attribute will returns the value of the attribute. So this is a conclusion. I hope everybody is clear. So now you know when to use get text, when to use get attribute of value. So now we successfully perform the double click action. So what we have done, we pass some text in the first input box and then we perform double click action. And from the second box, we capture the value and then compare it. Okay, so where we have done the double click action, this is how we can do the double click action. Direct method, double click and specify the element. So to perform the double click action, what is the method? Double click of element. Okay, three methods we discussed. For mouse over, move to element. For right click, context click. Double click, double click, direct. Now, we'll move on to the next one. Apart from the value tag, do we have any other tags that can hold input text like this example? Most of the times, uh, you can see sometimes the text attribute also. Not only the value, sometimes you can see text attribute. So instead of value, we can see sometimes text attribute. Okay, in that case also you can capture the text. Yes, now let us move on to the next one. So I hope everybody is clear how to perform mouse over, right click and then double click. Finally, very interesting stuff, drag and drop. Okay, most important scenario. Sometimes in our applications, we need to do drag and drop. So drag and drop in the sense only within application, not from your desktop to your application. Sometimes you, you will drag your files. Let's say you want to upload some files in the Google Drive. You will open the Google Drive and whatever files in your desktop, you can just drag and drop into Google Drive. So that won't happen. Files from your desktop cannot be uploaded into the Google Drive. That is having a different mechanism. But that is also drag and drop, but that is a different. That is uploading the files. But here, this drag and drop piece should happen within your application. So there are two elements are there in your application. One element you can drag into another place. One place to another place you can drag within your application. So we'll see how we can perform the drag and drop. So the next example is drag and drop. So let me show you an application. Yes. Now we can see this page, drag and drops demo. So here I have different capitals in one list. 
another side different countries boxes are there so in this we can do drag and drop for example let's say uh, i want to move this rome to italy so i can just do drag and drop like this i'm doing manually now even if you do incorrectly no problem but ultimate goal is we need to drag and drop so similarly washington i can just move into the united states and same thing you can just move into somewhere even if you do uh, incorrect no problem you can do uh, right click and drag and drop like this everything is got moved so how we can perform this drag and drop very easy listen carefully so let's go back create another example new class drag and drop drag and drop action okay so let's import web driver and driver dot get application then driver dot manager window max right so now let's see how we can perform the drag and drop it's very simple and before performing mouse action we need to create a actions class object that we will know so actions act equal to new actions and we need to pass a driver instance and after that we need to import actions okay so now we'll see the drag and drop action so first of all whenever you perform drag and drop only two things you have to know one is source element target element from where to where you need to move that we need to capture so here the rome is one element that i want to move what is the target italy is a target so source element is a rome target element is what italy so we need to first capture these two elements before performing drag and drop so let me inspect this rome element so wherever it is in the box no problem you can capture go to selector hub and it is giving some relative locator so id it is taken id is available id equal to box you can take x path or id whatever so i am getting the source element driver dot find element by dot x path and i'm not doing any action on this i'm just getting that element this is a rom and type of the variable is what web element import this this is our source element now we need to capture the target element so target element is what italy inspect and this is our italy target element so i can say driver dot find element by dot x path and this is our target element i can say this is also web element italy okay now i know source element i have a target element i think x path is not correct perfect okay so now this is our source element italy is a target element now we capture then we need to perform drag and so take the object act dot drag and drop direct method drag and drop and here we have to pass two parameters source element and target element so, so rom is a source element comma target is a it element so two parameters we need to pass from where to where we want to and after completion dot perform just call perform that's it one single statement will perform the drag and drop drag it okay so this is our drag so now let us execute and see rome to italy yes see automatically it is drop similar way we can also drag other options so for example uh, i want to drag some other city let's say i want to drag this washington into united states now what is the source element washington is our source element take this box 3 so this is drag and drop one another one 
drag and drop to driver dot find element by dot xpass. So this is a another element. This is a web element. Washing time. And what is the target element is United States. So inspect this target element. Get this X path. If I were dot find element by dot X path dot this is a US web element. Right. Now we have a source element and a target element. Again, same process. Same act object dot drag and drop Washington and US dot perform. That's it. So like this, we can repeat the same thing for other elements. Run as Java application. Right. So Rome to Italy, Washington to United States. Perfect. So this is how we can simply do drag and drop. So direct method, drag and drop, source element, target element. So what is the method? Drag and drop of source element, comma, target. So this is how we can perform the drag. So very easy, very simple. So mouse over, move to element. Right click is for context click. For double click, direct method available, direct double click. For drag and drop, direct method, drag and drop. So these are the four methods. And there are some more one or two methods are there, how to handle the slider and everything that I will show you in the next session. So horizontal slider, vertical slider, how we can handle the same thing. So same process for Washington. But if your application is allowed, you can get back. Otherwise, you cannot go back. Okay, for example, uh, I just moved into Italy. I already moved. So if you want to get back, yeah, you can get back. Same process. Here it is. You need to identify this source element, row, and you need to identify this entire box because this is a source now. So now you can go back like this. I'll give you some more assignments on this. You can try this. Yeah, you need to switch to those frames. So if two elements are present in the two different frames, okay, so you're identifying the source element from the frame one, target element from the frame two, then you need to drag and drop. So you can do that. In that case also, we can still handle if two elements are in two different frames. But switch to frames is required before locating element and before uh, dragging that element. Okay, so now this is how we can perform the drag and drop. So now we we'll let us understand something about, in the beginning I told you, build and perform, right? So build dot perform, and perform. So build means what? It will create an action. Perform will complete an action. So when do we use build method? When do we use perform method? So if I use build dot perform, and if I use perform method, both are same. No difference. You can use build dot perform, perform. Okay, but sometimes we have to create an action. And after some time, we can perform the action. Initially, I will create an action. That means I will build that action. Later on, I will perform the action. In that case, we use build. And also, whatever action you created, you can store that action in another variable, somewhere other variable that you can perform later. So I'll show you an example. So how we can do that? And what is the scenario where we can store the action in a variable? Let me create an action. And here in the Selenium itself, there is an interface called action interface. Actions is a class. Action is an interface. I'll tell you what is the difference. That is the main intention of showing this example. Actions versus action. Actions versus action. In the same example, I'll show you the build where we have to use a build action. Okay, so action versus action. So you can take any example. So I'll take a right click example. And the script we've already done previously. So import this web driver. OK. 
Okay, so let me remove this part. Okay, so if you look at this, uh, I launched this page and this is basically right click action. So on this element, So open this page and here you can see this button. When you do right click, right click action will be performed, right? So how we can do this right click action normally, we capture the element. We take the actions class object. And if you want to perform the right click, what we have done, act dot context click is a method which we have used. And we pass the element dot perform. This is the way we have done. Or else another way what we have done is we can use build dot perform. Insta perform. You can also use build dot perform. So as I said, both are same. So first it is creating an action, then performing it. And here it is directly performing the action. So now let us take the first one. So in this particular thing, first it is creating an action. Immediately it will perform the action. But I don't want to perform this action immediately. I want to build that action, but I want to perform this action later. Then what I can do is, I just call only build method. This will create an action. Okay, but how we can perform this action later? We want to store this in a variable. So whatever action is build, which we have to store in a variable. And if you have that variable, then you can perform it whenever you want in future. Okay, otherwise it is not possible. We have to store this action or whatever action is built, which we have to store in a variable. And that we can perform later. So what is this build method is returning is action interface. Action type of variable, it will return. Because this is the action actually. It is building an action. So I'm creating a variable called my action. And the type of this variable is what? Action type of variable. And this action is an interface which we have to import from org open dot synonym dot interactions. Okay, so what is an action variable will do? This can hold the action which is already built. So the build method is build that action. That means it is created an action that we are storing into a variable. And the type of this variable is what? Action type variable. So later I want to perform this action. Then what I can do now? can take this variable action variable dot perform this is how we can do so in the first statement what we are doing we are creating an action and storing into a variable in the second statement what we are doing we are performing we are performing or completing action here we are creating, building or creating, building or creating an action and storing into a variable. In the second statement, we are performing or completing an action. So this is how we have to use actions class variable. So whenever you say only build, this will just build that action. And where you want to store it in a variable is required. And that variable should be action type of variable. Now, what is the difference between action versus actions? Action versus actions. Very, very popular entry questions. Very, very popular entry question. What is the difference between action and actions? Or actions versus action. These are the difference. Actions is basically a class. It is a class will be used to perform mouse actions. All mouse operations methods are available in the actions class. We can create an object for that. Through the object, we can access all the methods. Action is an interface. We cannot create an object, but we can create a variable. So it is an interface will be used to store created actions, which we can store created actions. So everybody's understood. What is the difference between actions and action and when to use action variable? Whenever you want to store a created action or build an action in a variable, that variable should be action type of variable. And that variable you can use to perform the action later on. 
So here we are creating an action. Just we are creating an action. Here we are performing an action. Clear, everyone? The concept is clear. Please confirm in the chat box. What is the difference between actions and action? When to use action interface? Very popular entry question from the actions class. So how to handle mouse operations by using actions class methods? What are the actions class methods are available? You have to remember them for right click, double click, mouse over, drag and drop. So you have to remember these methods. And what is the difference between build.perform and perform? So build.perform is creating an action immediately to performing it or completing it. Only perform is the perform is also internally can build that action and immediately perform it. There is no much difference. Actions and action. Actions is a class which contains all methods. Through methods, we can perform the mouse operations. We can create an object because it is a class. There is an action is an interface. We can create a variable, but we cannot create a, an object. We can store actions into action variable. So this is the concept of actions and action. I hope now you understood this. Many people are having some confusion here. So I just clarified this. Fine. So just practice these things for today's session. And uh, by using these action class methods, we can do some more actions. We can also handle the slide bars. Okay. Sometimes you can see price element, right? We can just drag and drop. There is also a kind of a drag and drop, but we need to handle the different methods. And the horizontal scrolling, vertical scrolling. And uh, we can also perform the keyboard actions. Sometimes when you do shortcut keys, we click on keyboard, right? That also we can handle using uh, mouse actions. There are certain methods are there to handle the keyboard actions. So that we will discuss in the tomorrow session. Fine. So come to the assignment parts based on today's session. I'll give you a few assignments you guys can try. The first assignment, double click. So just go to this place, double click and drag and drop. Both are there in this page. Let me open this. Okay, so if you look at here, uh, this is the double click. Same thing actually, whatever we have done in the session, same thing. Same, some text you can fill here. And when you do double click, same thing is copied. You can just check it and drag and drop is here. We can see this is small box, this is another box. So this small box, we need to drag and drop like this. Okay, now we can see dropped. If you want, you can verify this message also. You can capture this dropped. After drag and drop, you can verify this. So toggle is a different thing. Okay, toggle, we can capture it by using get text method. So now we can capture this. Tool tips, toggles, we can handle the different. So this is a drag and drop. This I will show you tomorrow session. Slider, how we can handle this. Okay. And this is one assignment. Next one, drag and drop. So go to this. Yeah. You can see this. Uh, there is a balance sheet here. You can see debit side and credit side. Account amount, account amount. Here there are some values. What you need to do is, you need to drag and drop. For example, it's a bank. You can just drag and drop like bank and 5,000. Okay, and sales. Let's say 5,000. Sales is not coming here. Sales come here. Sales and 5,000. You need to drag and drop all these above items, including numbers and text, bank, sales, owner's inquiry, loan. Everything you need to drag and drop in this balance sheet. But how we can drag and drop? I will give you a small document for reference. And by using the, by seeing the document, you can perform the drag and drop. I will share the solution also for this. You can drag. So initially, the box is like this. And after performing drag and drop, it should become like this. So on the debit side, you can see bank and 5,000. In the credit side, you can see sales and 5,000. You don't need to move all the items, just move one or two items. From the debit side, bank and 5,000 should drag. So here 5,000 and bank should be in the debit side and sales and 5,000 
sales and 5000 should be in the credit side so try to do this assignment it's very useful and you will learn lot of things i will provide the solution for this but try yourself first and then refer the solution and this is another assignment based upon today's session okay so that's all for today's session i will stop here we'll continue tomorrow's session